It is impressive how easily humans can do tasks that are incredibly challenging for robots. Understanding a 3D space, manipulating objects, and making decisions based on attributes of those objects can be computationally difficult for a robot. Our team used the Open Manipulator X 4 degree robotic arm in combination with a USB webcam to pick and place colored balls and sort them by color. The arm can also recognize when an object is in the workspace that does not belong and move it to a designated location. We also implemented safety measures to make sure the robotic arm would not move into the workspace while an operator was moving objects or setting up the environment. To get started with this project, we needed to understand how to control and operate a 4 degree of freedom arm. We first used a common tool for assigning reference frames, the denovit huttenberg Convention, or DH Convention. This allowed us to create reference frames for each join of the kinematic chain of the robot, and use the DH parameters to create a transformation matrix from the world frame to the next joint, and more matrices between each joint. Multiplying all these matrices together gives us our T0 to end effector matrix that describes the relationship between the end effector and the world frame matrices. This allows us to do our first method of control. By giving the robot a vector of joint variables, we can identify the configuration of the end effector. While forward kinematics allows us to understand the position of the robotic arm using joint variables, it does not give us control over where the robot is in the workspace. We'll use inverse kinematics to find the required joint variables given a set of x, y, and z coordinates. However, it is important to note that there may be multiple or infinite solutions to any given location in the workspace, so it is important to provide extra parameters to define things, such as the angle of our end effector from the horizontal. Now that we can send the robot to points in the workspace, we want to create a better method for controlling more aspects of the robot besides only its joint parameters. We can do this by creating trajectories for the end effector using cubic and quintic polynomials. Our robot uses quintic polynomials to generate a trajectory that can control the start position, end position, start velocity, end velocity, start acceleration, and end acceleration. Using a quintic trajectory gives us control over the start and end conditions, which allows us to ensure the arm moves along a smooth path without any rapid acceleration. Now that we can manipulate the arm throughout the workspace, we need to give the robot the ability to identify and understand objects in its workspace. We take images from a camera mounted at an angle opposite the base of the robot. These images mean nothing to our robot in their current form, so we will use a computer vision image processing pipeline to identify the colored balls. First, we will do image enhancement by undistorting the fisheye lens to make sure the checkerboard lines always appear straight. We will then use a polygon mask to crop out everything outside the checkerboard, so the robot does not get confused by the objects outside the desired working space. At this point, we need to do some segmentation to create a binary mask that identifies only objects we want the robot to see. We tune a color mask to our desired colors in the HSV color space that mask out everything besides the desired color. We do this for each color to create a binary mask for each color. We then use I am close to dilate and erode the image, making sure we can more accurately determine the location of the balls. Once we have these masks, we can identify the blobs of white pixels and output a centroid for where the ball is. However, due to the location of the camera, the robot will attempt to grab the ball in front of its actual location. So using some geometry of the workspace, we can create an offset depending on the location of the ball to increase the precision and accuracy of the robot. We put everything together by taking the outputs of the centroid of the colored balls and using inverse kinematics to go to their locations, pick up the balls, and place them in designated locations based on their colors. There you have it, a rudimentary pick-and-place robot that can sort colored balls. But wait, what is that object doing in our workspace? And what if an operator gets in the way of the robot and is injured by the arm? To start off with our final implementations to fix these problems, this project involved object detection through an alternate image processing pipeline. First, we take an image of the current workspace and compare it to a base image of the workspace using MATLAB's IMFuse function. We then apply a median filter, binarize the image, dial it and erode it to make sure we are accurately determining the location of the object. It then locates the centroids of these objects, places them outside the workspace. The robot will only look for objects after moving all the colored balls out of the workspace to not confuse any balls as objects. Finally, we implemented our safety feature that allows operators to change the workspace and manipulate balls while the robot is operating. This will pause the robot and make sure that the robot does not enter the workspace while an operator is there. It does this in a similar way to our object detection, but instead of comparing a base image, it compares to an image from 0.1 seconds prior and compares how many pixels have changed to determine if there's any current movement in the workspace. 
If there is movement, the robot will wait until the workspace has been clear for one full second in order to enter the workspace. Overall, this project has been a fun adventure of learning about robotic manipulation and computer vision for our group, implementing many important topics such as forward and inverse kinematics, trajectory generation, MATLAB coding, and GitHub workflow. Thank you for watching.